Have you ever looked at a giant cruise ship and wondered how something so massive can float? Well, we've seen that sometimes they don't. But generally speaking, thousands of these floating cities, packed with passengers, restaurants and pools, are cruising the oceans every day. How did we come up with such a complex idea? Well, the history of cruise ships is a fascinating journey through time. These modern marvels are the evolution of early ocean liners. In the 1800s, ships were mainly used for transportation across the Atlantic. The focus was on speed and efficiency rather than comfort. But as technology improved, ships became larger and more focused on providing enjoyable travel experiences. The golden age of ocean liners came in the early 20th century with famous ships like the Titanic and the Queen Mary. These ships were luxurious, but they were still primarily meant for getting from point A to point B. It wasn't until the 1970s that the modern cruise industry as we know it began to take shape. Companies like Royal Caribbean, Carnival and Norwegian Cruise Line began building ships specifically designed for vacationing. These ships emphasized onboard amenities, entertainment and destinations rather than just transportation. Over the decades, cruise ships have grown larger and more elaborate, pushing the boundaries of naval engineering. Now let's answer the question we all have. How does something so big stay afloat? It's all thanks to buoyancy and displacement. The ship's hull, the main body of the ship, is designed like a giant hollow shell. When it enters the water, it pushes aside a volume of water equal to its weight. This creates an upward force that balances the ship's weight, allowing it to float. But it's not just about floating. These ships also need to be stable. That's where the ship's design comes into play. The lower decks are filled with heavy equipment like engines and fuel tanks, which helps keep the center of gravity low. Many modern cruise ships also use stabilizers, large wing-like structures that extend from the side of the ship below the waterline. These can be adjusted to counteract the rolling motion caused by waves, keeping passengers comfortable even in rough seas. Hey, wait a second. If you want to keep learning stuff to get a bit smarter every day, we wanted to invite you to subscribe to our channel real quick and comment it down below so you get our response. Today, the largest cruise ships are truly awe-inspiring. Royal Caribbean's Oasis-class ships, for example, are over 360 meters long. That's longer than three football fields. They can carry nearly 6,800 passengers and have a crew of over 2,100. It's basically a small town floating on the ocean. To put this size into perspective, let's compare it to some famous landmarks. The Oasis-class ships are about as long as the Empire State Building is tall wider than the White House is long, and taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa. But size isn't everything. These ships are packed with cutting-edge technology. Modern cruise ships use Azipod propulsion systems, enormous electric motors housed in pods that can rotate 360 degrees. This gives the ships incredible maneuverability, allowing them to turn on a dime despite their massive size. Of course, running a floating city isn't easy. It takes a huge crew working around the clock to keep everything running smoothly. A typical large cruise ship employs over 2,000 crew members, organized into departments handling navigation, engineering, hospitality, and medical services. Behind the scenes, there are important departments, such as sophisticated waste management systems, industrial-scale laundry facilities, and complex logistics for storing and restocking supplies. On board, you'll find over 20 decks filled with amenities. There are parks with real trees, theaters hosting Broadway-style shows, water parks with multiple slides, rock climbing walls, zip lines, and so much more. Many ships have a central promenade that feels like a city street, lined with shops, cafes, and bars, some of the most incredible features you might find on a modern cruise ship are the Ultimate Abyss, 
a 10-story slide that's the tallest at sea, or go-kart tracks on some Norwegian cruise ships. If you want to learn more about the lives of the crew and the challenges of running a floating city, The Cruise Confidential by Brian David Bruns, it's a hilarious and eye-opening look at what goes on behind the scenes. Talking about challenges, the cruise industry has faced a lot, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. This global crisis forced the entire sector to temporarily halt operations in 2020, resulting in billions of dollars in losses and job cuts. The pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in cruise ship health protocols and highlighted concerns about disease transmission in confined spaces. This led to significant improvements in onboard health and safety measures, including enhanced air filtration systems and stringent cleaning protocols. Also, cruise ships have a significant environmental impact, contributing to air and water pollution, solid waste generation, and potential harm to marine ecosystems. A large cruise ship can emit as much as 1 million cars daily and generate millions of gallons of wastewater weekly while the industry is responsible for about 0.2% of global carbon emissions, the per-passenger carbon footprint can be high. However, cruise lines are actively working to mitigate these effects through cleaner fuels like LNG, advanced waste management systems, and more efficient ship designs. They're also subject to international regulations like MARPOL, though enforcement in international waters can be challenging. Now, we want to hear you in the comments. Considering the environmental impact of cruise ships, do you think the experience they offer justifies their ecological footprint? This is the end of the video. Hope you learned something new with us today. Please give a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel to keep getting enriched from our content and share the video with someone you know will like it.